Morning friends, how's everybody doing today? So I'm getting ready to assemble Buckins 266. Um, pretty excited. Porting's done. Uh, now I'm at the point I'm going over every component in the saw and just making sure things are good. Um, this was a logging saw and I don't believe it was one of Buckins runners. I think he picked it up and then just sent it here. So got to be extra diligent. I want to show you guys a little something because like I always say when when I run into the same problems again and again and again, it's obviously a consistent problem and I can, you guys are probably going to run into the same problems. So I'm going to bring you guys into the bench here and I'm going to show you guys what's going on. Um, super common problem with these 266 class saws, whether it's um, 272, 268, uh, 266, 61, 66, 162, uh, 630, 625, 670 John's thread. All those are the same chassis and they all have the same recoil issues. I'll bring you guys in close here. Just gonna jump in and out today. Uh, just gonna jump in and out today and uh, as I assemble this saw. Okay, so I clean the recoil. Any of you that have cleaned one of these, there's just places to get mung everywhere. Okay, cleaned up pretty nice, got all the fins cleaned, a toothbrush and some elbow grease. Okay, I, I cleaned the spring, lubed it, put it all back together. Now, I was just supposed to put a new rope on this, and look, once I uncoiled the rope, okay, the pulley is cracked. Um, super, super common on these. Um, a lot of times they break off. You got to be really careful when you're putting a rope in these not to put too much rope because it'll it'll spread and it'll actually break the pulley. And that's what's happened to this one. Okay. So that's why it's important to have a lot of extra parts. So I started digging through my parts stash. And I found this one off of 61. But here's the problem. It sticks out too far. Look. See the distance on this one? This one's deeper. So it's like, that's not going to work. Uh, this is off a 625 Johnser Ed. This is my last good Johnser Ed recoil. As good as it can be. Um, it looks like, now this one is different. And there's a different plastic. It's probably been upgraded. I think the 625 will fit. They look like they are the same distance. But the pulleys... The pulley's a little bit narrower, so again, I'm going to have to be diligent to not put too much rope. And the engagement is different, so I'm going to try and build a new recoil for Bucken, because this stuff's getting really hard to find. I'm just going to dig through my recoil bin and see what else I have. If anything else fits, I'll let you guys know. I found this one too, uh, 630. So... It is different. I'm going to try and, and cobble together recoil for bucking so that you can get this running. Uh, I had I had a good spare recoil, but uh, I already sent it to him with another saw. So, uh, the way the cookie crumbles. Anyhow, I run into this all the time. If you have one of these 266s, uh, check that pulley. They often are broken like that. Or they break right across here. It's just the plastic's old. And uh, they get wore out. Just jumping in and out as I find things that I think you guys should see. You see that little O-ring here? Okay, all the way around, both sides. Okay, this is behind the flywheel. And this is your oil pump. Okay, so you have a crank seal on both sides, but you also have these little O-rings. Uh, nine times out of ten, when you have an air leak on one of these saws, it's usually these O-rings deteriorated. Okay, these are available only from Husqvarna, so I put grease on them before I install them. Okay, we're just assembling Buckin's bottom end. And, uh, you know, putting the guide plate on, chain adjuster, this bottom uh, crank case bolt for the dog, just assembling the little odds and ends and then we'll get this thing back buttoned up but i just thought i'd show you guys that these things leak all the time so uh in a pinch you can put silicone around and mount it in the case 
But I just thought I'd show you guys that because a lot of people don't know that there's seals there. Okay, so one thing I just want to show you guys, I've built lots of these. There's lots of little things that kind of set me back when I first started. So you got your O-ring all the way around here. I've put some grease on there. There's a little tiny wee O-ring here. Make sure you don't lose that. That seals up against the case. Okay. Um, there's a heavy lip on the crank right here. Let's show you guys. Okay. If you try and slide the crank seal over that lip, you're going to prolapse the seal. Okay. You're going to, you're going to prolapse the seal and possibly take out the spring that's in there. So what I do is I take a little piece of pop can. Okay. And I make a cone. Okay. And this will slide the seal over. Okay, so take your pop can and bend it over top of the crankshaft, okay, make a little cone out of it, then hold it underneath, take your oil pump, okay, and get it started, and then just slowly push your seal over there, okay. There's three bolts that hold these on. Now, these bolts are often stripped, so be careful when you're taking them out and installing them. I put some thread locker on there. Just to make sure it, that'll help the, it'll help them seal. I just want to get them started so that I can't pull the oil pump off. Because if you pull the oil pump off, you get to put that cone back in there. So... Okay, get the crank seal started. Okay, now what I'll do is, is I will spin the crank and pull that out of there. Okay, there you go. Okay, so that's the trick to doing it on these saws. See, see the lip there in the center? Okay, otherwise you're going to prolapse that seal and you might not even know you did it and then you're going to have a massive air leak when you fire the saw up. So, um, just a little trick I've learned over the years. Otherwise you just can't do it. Okay, so there's a little washer that goes over there. This is the oil pump drive gear. Uh, often these will strip when the oil pump doesn't spin freely anymore. These oil pumps can seize sometimes. Okay, oil pump worm gear. Again, make sure it's engaged. Make sure it's spinning. Make sure it's it's spinning the uh, gear on the oil pump. There we go. Okay, make sure that doesn't bind, or the minute you fire the saw up, it's gonna it's not gonna be happy. Okay, we got our clutch. That covers the whole assembly. We'll give Buck in a brand new 387 pin. Okay, sprocket. Again, make sure there's not a lot of play in there. And then this little piece right here is a dust cover. And the one on this saw was smashed, so I grabbed this from another saw. Hopefully I can get it started on there. Okay, slid this over there. You gotta do it carefully because a lot of times these are brittle. Okay, and then there's four there's four uh, keys on there and that engages in the back of the clutch. So what you wanna do is make sure, there you go, and it'll go all the way down. Okay, note to self, do not start saw without tightening clutch. There's your clutch. Okay, now let's do the other side. Same thing, I put a little greaser on here. If you have a leak here, you can put Moto Seal around the flange. This one's not in bad of shape. It is, uh, or it's not in too bad of shape. These are plastic, so be careful with them. Okay, uh, brand new seal in there. This seal here, this seal here, uh, not as much problem getting it over, okay? Again, just slowly work its way down all the way. There you go. So it's it's only the other side that 
the seals give me trouble. Sometimes you can get them over if you got a little bit of a looser seal, but okay, and same thing, Loctite. And you don't want to over tighten these because it, it is plastic. This is a newer saw. A lot of the ones I work on are like early 80s, so the plastic's pretty much toast. Okay, there you go. And then just cinch them down. And, and now when we're done, the crank is super tight, right? Because we got good seal tension. That's what you want. Uh, a good tight seal rarely will leak. Okay, we got our coil just loosely installed. Remember this is a two-piece ignition. Now, now I'll mount the igniter. I believe they call this an igniter. Okay, so that's mounted to there. This wire comes around and to this plastic piece. There's your kill switch wire. Flywheel. Spent uh, some time this morning cleaning it up. Uh, it was dirty. Okay, washer. Again, I'm just jumping in and out, sharing what I'm doing with you guys. And again, we will tighten all this when we put the top end on. <laughs> Don't forget, I've done it. You'll fire this up, it'll run great, you'll be all patting yourself on the back, and then uh, <laughs> all of a sudden you'll hear this, well bang, and this flywheel will be falling off. Yeah, I've been there many times. It's, uh, it's a thing. <laughs> I don't do it so often anymore, but I have done it. Okay, we're going to leave that loose, now I'll put the handle on. Okay, I got the handle on, feeding feeding the fuel line through. Then there's this rubber grommet here. That's where the uh, throttle shaft and linkage goes through. Oops. There you go. Okay, and then just slide it in there. This is one of the easier tanks to, uh, to put on. And I'll put this sideways. This saw has all rubber AV mounts. Uh, these are known for being spongy. Uh, check. There's one, two, three on each side. There's uh, there's two small ones and a big one. Uh, always check those on these. These ones are in great shape. Uh, this saw is still a little mushy. I might actually try something to stiffen these up. Um, I kind of had an idea whether that idea is a good one or not. We'll see. Okay, there's six of these small Allen bolts. That's where they go. They hold the AV mounts on. Oops, this is this one has what what's left of the chain catch on it. So we'll put it back where it came from. One more up here, and it's the same on both sides. I'm just showing you guys. Again, I, I love these saws. They're really easy to work on. Um, they're just a lot of fun. I, I've built a lot of these, and uh, I enjoy them. Now's the time to check. Remember, this was hitting the transfer on the last cylinder. It's close here, but not. it's not going to hit. Just making sure. I'd rather find out now. There's a boat. 8 16th of an inch clearance so we should be good but i'm going to keep that in mind because remember the old cylinder there was this was all ground down okay i think it's time for lunch i'm going to eat me some lunch uh, i'm going to go inside and wash this piston and cylinder one more time i actually found a little spot i didn't like this morning on the intake uh check check recheck and double check and triple check is my theory and uh i found a little spot I could just feel something, so I went in there and hit it again with some 600 grit. Now we're happy. Got nothing to worry about. The other thing I have to do, uh, when you deck these cylinders, there's a rubber gasket that goes around here. Sometimes that binds up, depending on uh, how much you deck the cylinder. So 
again um i'm just checking all my clearances and everything before i start applying sealant i'd rather know now than after i'll hit you guys up after lunch almost buddy i had to whip you up a quick muffler just so we can run it in yours is way too rotten must be by salt water or something I don't know. I never seen no salt water, but I know you got salt water that way. Okay, it's after lunch. I pre-fitted everything. Making sure that my choke and everything functions. I had to do some modifications to the linkages. And, uh, well, there you go. 390 carb on a 266 XP. Um, I'm going to wash my hands one more time, and then let's get to putting this top end on. Uh, I think we got everything assembled. I have to remember to tighten the clutch and the flywheel. We'll do that once we get the piston and cylinder on. <laughs> this is rowdy. I like this. Okay, give me a few minutes, folks. Okay. A little bit of Opti 2. Just want to make sure that this bottom end is nice and lubed again. Okay. Wrist pin. Make sure it's clean, free of any dirt and debris. I'm just going to blow it out. Okay, same thing. Okay, just want to make sure that there's oil on the wrist pin. Put that through there. Okay, I'm going to get my piston ready for install. Okay, we managed to get the wrist pin in. And it only flung in the air once. And it actually hit the... It, hit the shelf over top um, I was a little worried <laughs> okay more assembly lube you guys know the deal we're just having fun in the power saw shop aren't we that's what we do here okay these wrist pins are uh, very very well made and very tight okay there we go now I'm gonna put the other one in off camera because again I'm scared Okay, got both the wrist pins in. Oh, I can't wait. This is exciting. Okay, I'm going to prep my cylinder base, clean it, um, get, re get it ready for the moto seal. Uh, I'm going to install my gaskets and my carb intake and filter mount, and we can install the top end. Also, I'm going to install studs in here. Now, we are probably going to pipe this saw, but I got to run it with something, and I don't have the pipe made, so... Um, we're going to do that. Uh, Buckins muffler was really rotten, so I took this off. These typically face backwards. This is off of a 266, 630, something like that. I cut this slot open, so as you guys can see, there, you can see behind, this thing's wide open. Okay, so I'm going to get this all prepped, and we'll slip everything together. Okay. Got all my gaskets. Remember, uh, when when possible, use OEM gaskets for this application. Don't forget to put this on because you can't get it on after. Um, you generally have to relieve this a little bit, okay? After you're done uh, porting, you got if you deck the cylinder, this ends up getting stuck. So, um, just a, a little note there. Okay, so we got carburetor. We got our gasket here. Again, make sure everything lines up. And I put this on backwards. I thought it looked a little funny there. I'm going to have to fix this here. Let's see. What do we got here? This way. All right. Yes, this way. Okay. And this goes on the bottom here. There we go. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Again, we don't take ourselves too seriously here, do we? And again, when you deck the cylinder, uh, I had to relieve this a little bit. It it mounts to the uh, to the case. Uh, I found that out uh, when I built the John Sered 630 Super. Uh, I did a lot of machine work to that saw. That's the one we ran in the shootout, and uh, it uh, just making sure making sure none of this catches and it does a little bit so i'm gonna have to relieve this just a hair oh i guess if we 
Okay, we're gonna put it together the way it is. Again, OEM gasket. Thank you, Harvey. Because <laughs> I don't have, I didn't have these gaskets in stock. Okay, there you go. There's your whole assembly. Drop this down on here. Now, if you're worried about this leaking, you can put a little moto seal on it. Um, you tend to get leaks around the impulse when you use aftermarket gaskets. So, um, that's why I keep saying, um, try not to use the aftermarket gaskets. Okay, now I'm just going to tilt this a little bit and then it doesn't catch on the, uh, on the fast idle. Just kind of nice. The saw will have fast idle without having to pull this anymore. Okay, I'm going to tighten these down. I always try and put these together in one assembly because it's hard to get at these bolts after. Okay, there we go. So there is our full assembly. Now I'm going to put the ring on. Again, just a, just a little tiny wee bit of assembly lube. Just to get the, uh, just to keep the ring happy. Arrow goes to the exhaust, but of course there's no arrow on this anymore because I machined it off. So, uh, how do you know which way it goes? The, uh, the, uh, the alignment dowel for the ring goes on the intake side generally. Okay, I'm just going to snap this ring on. Uh, I checked this ring for end gap. Um, it's like bang on. Uh, again, CCC, good job on this on this setup. Very, very impressed. Okay, uh, I'll put my moto seal down, get my cylinder bolts, and lube this thing up and put it together. Okay. Well, moto seal, you guys know the deal. Those of you that have been around, uh, I don't use base gaskets. Almost never. So, uh, for those of you that ask me, I don't use base gaskets. I've never had a failure due to no base gasket. Uh, I've never, ever had a problem. So, to each their own though. If, uh, if you want to use a base gasket, I'm, I'm good with that. Again, uh, I don't argue, I don't argue building techniques. If you're having fun... You're building saws that rip, and if you're building for other people, if your saws are reliable or not, depending. I mean, some people build race saws that could grenade at any second. That's cool too. Um, if you're happy with what you're doing and your saws cut to a level that you like or your customers like, I, I'm in. Uh, we're just having fun. I don't take this very seriously, and. Uh, I'm just having fun and seeing what I can do. What I'm trying to do is build a crazy fast 266. So, okay, I'm going to finish this and I'll hit you guys back up. Little assembly oil. Again, we don't want to start this thing dry, right? We want to. I'm going to give it a little bit of lube. Sorry, I bumped you guys there. I'm trying to work quickly. Um, I mean, this moto seal doesn't set up super fast, but, okay, let's put a little oil on the skirts. Okay, let's put this top end on. Got our four bolts ready to rock and roll. Just going to wipe off my finger because I know... Okay, we're good to go. Actually, I'm going to use the snap-on. Which one here? We have one, I believe. Maybe we don't. Okay, we'll use this one. Okay, here we go. I'm not even going to use a ring compressor because I'm not in a ring compressor type of mood. Sorry, I just saw a little something there. go straight down make sure there's nothing in the way line up this rubber divider 
as you're sliding it down because again you cannot get that on after um you just can't there we go top ends on boom you gotta make noises while you're assembling your saws that's just part of the deal okay uh, i'm gonna put a little bit of moto seal on these i don't know why i do that i just do it's just something i always do we're all creatures of habit aren't we Okay, a little on this one. Stuff that down in there. This one. I was going to work on the uh, water hauler today, but I had a few more issues with this saw. Um, just old parts and stuff like that. I had a few more issues than I thought I did, so I... Uh, just decided to get this thing happening at least I can fire this thing up today and uh, at least I can fire this thing up today and heat cycle it we're not going to put this in the wood yet uh, I got metal here to make a pipe so I'd like to run this thing with a pipe and uh, see what the deal is with it. But at least I can heat cycle it with this muffler. There we go. Uh, you guys ask me how long before I run my saws uh, with the modal seal base gasket. I don't know, an hour or two. A um, couple hours is safe. Overnight's better. Again, I guess sometimes if you're excited, I get it. I don't know, a couple of hours I'd say you'll be fine. There's only a couple of thousands of motor seal in between. Uh, it's pretty, pretty thin on there. Okay, I will tighten those up after. I'm going to put a piece of rope through here and uh, tighten up the flywheel and the clutch. Okay, folks, top ends on. Throttle, choke. Uh... The fast idle engages. Here's our impulse line that we made. New uh, new uh, fuel line. Got the spark plug in. We have spark. Uh, I got to bolt this down. Uh, I have to make a little relief in the top cover for this impulse line. Um, I forgot about that. Okay, right about there. I'll do that. Okay, like I said, we're going to rig it up with this muffler. This is like a 630 Super muffler. The muffler that was on this saw was pretty scary. Uh, be aware, and again, just I like to share little tips. If you are working on a saw and it has a rusty muffler, you can assume there's rust inside the muffler. Um, you can blow a saw up pretty quick doing that, so um, don't risk it at least inspect the inside of the muffler okay we're gonna have a running power saw pretty soon i'm gonna let this thing dry put the top cover on and uh there you go air filter this is a power saw by the looks of it whether it runs or not is another question <laughs> never know right There we go. This thing looks pretty good now. It was a little bit dirty when I got it, but it's, uh, it's not too bad. Double check our cylinder bolts. Big fella, so I probably over tighten these. There we go. Top cover, little notch there for the, uh, for the impulse line. There we go. And all that's left is to put the handle on. I'll do that, and uh, when this thing's been sitting long enough, we'll fire it up. Well, friends, we had a minor air leak issue. Well, major when I fired it up. Um, I pulled the saw back down. It was leaking behind the flywheel. Remember that plastic carrier I was talking about? Uh, I put I put uh, a new seal in there again, and then I put moto seal around. 
I want you guys to hear this thing. We got some fine tuning to do, but listen to this thing. See if we can get this thing to fire up. Carb friends, but <laughs> I'm just gonna aim you guys up here. Well, there you go. Uh, messy bench, uh, four or five hours longer than I was hoping it would take, but we have a running power saw. Wow, does this thing light up when you touch the trigger? I'm scared to to poke it because it's going sky high. Um, this is the fastest revving saw I've ever built. Probably the fastest one I've ever felt. So if that's any indication of the kind of horsepower we're making with this thing, um, we'll have to wait and see. Anyhow, it's time for dinner. Uh, I'm late. I was supposed to be in the house earlier. Sorry, honey. Um, but we got a running power saw. Uh, we still got to heat cycle this. I got to dial in the carb. It's, uh, I think the metering lever is a touch too high. I'll show you guys when I do that. If I lower it a little bit, it, it's loading up right away at idle. So um, that's probably the deal. I'll have to pull the carb down and have a look. But it runs, it starts, it idles somewhat. Uh, we don't have an air leak. I did a vacuum pressure test. We're good there. So I'm excited. What do you guys think? You can hear the air moving through that thing. It's going to be an animal. I hope it is anyways. Anyhow, as always, thanks for watching. Take her easy and stay tuned for more of this saw as we heat cycle it and we're going to pipe it. So, later. <laughs>